Hello, I'm Shilonin from the Children of Echoes. If you'd like me to forge some tools for you, just uh, let me know. But uh, I do have quite the backlog of commissions at the moment, so even if you submit a request now, it might be a while before I get to it. Ugh, my potted plant on the porch has died again. I was watering it every day. Ugh, don't tell me I overdid it this time. We should uh, take a break after all that running around. <sighs> Uh, yeah, let's rest here for a bit. Oh, how many forging commissions do I still have to finish? Let's see. One, two... Hmm, not so many as I thought. I'll get to them tomorrow. Perfect weather for a nap in the workshop. <sighs> I'm awake now. <sighs> Time for a nap. Oh, wow. Ugh. Where did my sunglasses go? The temperature's just right. Ah, but this isn't the best spot to lie down. Good morning. Did you uh, get some good sleep? Here, drink this. Starting your day with something sweet will boost your mood for the whole day. It's afternoon now, which means... <sighs> Time for a break. I'll go have a nap, just to wake me up if you need anything. Wow, just look at the time. Yeah, let's uh, call it a day. Let's go get some food together to celebrate a great day of work. Good night. Oh, remember to fluff your pillow, otherwise your neck will hurt in the morning. No matter how busy work might get, you must set aside some time to rest. If you don't stop working, your mind and body will go on strike. And once that happens, your ability to perform good work will just go down the drain. Hmm? Wait, you can't find any time for a break? Well, then just say that I suddenly needed to see you for something important and come over to my workshop and take a small nap. I'll help cover for you. Some of my friends have told me that I can be slow at times and that I rarely seem to get emotional. Well, for example, one time I was at a friend's house for a party and we uh, started talking about the topic of marriage. A friend asked if we would cry when she got married and before I knew it, everyone started crying and they were all sobbing and saying that they didn't want to lose her as a friend. Well, I didn't get what everyone was crying about. I mean, isn't getting married a happy thing? You know, she's just getting married, not going away. We could still go visit her. Oh, what if she was sad and getting married against her wishes? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought about that. Well, in that case, I would just come rolling into the ceremony and steal her away. You know, I'm pretty uh, fast, you know. Yeah, I'd save her in time. No matter what you're making, the temperature of the furnace is always crucial. If it's too cool, you won't be able to soften or melt the materials, and it'll be impossible to cleanse impurities. If the temperature is too high, some materials will be unusable. The way most crafters adjust the temperature is by removing fuel from the fire or adding more wood to burn. As for me, I would usually add phlogiston-enriched gems to control the temperature. Phlogistonated flames are much stronger than that of a regular fire. What? Oh, what do I do with the gems after the phlogiston is used up? I just uh, find a place to pile them up. Once the phlogiston is gone, they have nothing but a aesthetic value. But yeah, if you'd like some, feel free to pick out a few. Oh, my vision? Yeah, it's uh, pretty useful. Having it allows me to more accurately identify the concentration and distribution of the geo element in various ores, and that helps me quickly sort good ore from scraps. Oh, does it have a meaning? Huh, I've uh, never really thought about it much. I mean, as long as it can help me with my work, I, I don't care about the rest. I often try to forge small ornaments with complex structures to hone my precision crafting skills. For example, uh, a web-like pendant or woven scroll earrings. Once I finish a product, I usually give it to one of my friends or neighbors. Oh, can I make rings? Of course! Just the other day, I made a ring in the shape of a brilliant chrysanthemum. The design schematic alone took me <laughs> quite a bit of effort. Oh, you'd like one? Sure, let me see your hand. Once I've measured your finger, I can forge one for you in no time. 
I uh, really don't know how to raise plants. I've watered them once every three days, pulled out the weeds once every five days, and fertilized them twice in a week, just like the instructions said, and even made absolutely sure that they got the right amount of sunlight. Yet, all of my plants still withered and died. Yeah, <sighs> don't tell me that even gardening requires quite a bit of luck. Kachina commissioned me to forge a drill for her that could not only bore into the ground, but also jump around. It wasn't that complicated to make, but adjusting the uh, angle of the seat <laughs> was tricky. In the end, Kachina took my suggestion to ditch the seat in favor of a manual control system that connects to the power core of the drill. It, huh? Oh, why does Kachina bounce around when she's operating the turbo twirly? Well, that's how she wanted it. She said she prefers having direct sensory feedback while she's driving, so I removed part of the shock absorption system. I do wonder if I should make her some mouth guards next, though. Yeah, the last thing I want is for her to bite her tongue while using the drill. Mualani is an amazing athlete. I've never seen anyone make surfing or gliding on the spareways look so smooth or easy. In fact, I have yet to see Mualani ever slip up. Hmm? What would happen if a person or a saurian got in her way? Hmm, I'm pretty sure she would just uh, scoop them up and keep gliding along. To get Chaska's gun up and running in high altitude <laughs> was no easy task. First, I had to make sure it would remain stable and reliable in high-speed combat. Then, I had to develop standard and special ammunition that could be used for combat at high altitudes. And, finally, I had to consider how to solve the issues of recoil and accuracy while flying. But Chaska told me the last two issues were no big deal, and that she'd be able to manage as long as I installed some basic mechanical crosshairs. Chaska has definitely proven to be an expert user of that weapon. Goes to show that she really is a flying ace of the Flower Feather Clan. Kanicha's nice, but that how? Ugh, it's really hard to be around. Speaking of, where did a how even come from? If he originated from some kind of device, then there's actually a chance that I could make him shut up forever. Hmm. Huh. Maybe I should find some time to go over and discuss this with Kanich. Seat Lolly would occasionally come to my workshop to buy some more. According to her, some ores can be crushed into powder and taken as medicine to help her with divinations and ceremonies. Hmm, have I ever asked her to read my fortune? No, I'm not interested in knowing the future. I already have enough to worry about with all my present work. And besides, I always get sleepy during divination rituals. Aoife has come to the tribe before to heal some Tepetlosaurs. He is very skilled and knows how to care for his patients. Even the most rambunctious Saurians will sit quietly when he's around. Aoife said it's all thanks to the set of Saurian syringes I made for him. Even without the needle on it, it's enough to deter any person or Saurian from misbehaving. Would you like to see it? I still have a sample set if you're interested. Wait here, I'll go fetch the biggest one. Huh? Wait, why are you backing away? The needle isn't even attached. It's completely safe. If two negatives make a positive, then a weirdo in a group of weirdos should just be normal. But Auroran somehow still seems a little off to me. Still, he seems plenty nice as a person. He even had Aoife bring a bunch of fruit and honey to the children of Echoes. Presumably because he thought he had caused too much trouble for us. I had no idea you could get such sweet honey from phlogist and aphids, so he must know what he's doing. Yeah, <sighs> how can some people be such naturals with plants and animals? I once helped the Collective of Plenty make a couple sets of super heavy weight plates and dumbbells. And when it was time for the goods to be picked up, Eonsan came with a group from the tribe to inspect the finished products. She picked up and checked every single weight before placing them one by one in a cart. And after lifting all those weights, she was barely winded, and her face was only a little red. <laughs> to be honest, I'm a little jealous of them. Not only are they really strong, but... Yeah, they've also got away with plants. Even though I'm a name engraver, forging ancient names isn't my primary work. 
Helping people in the tribe forge tools and weapons makes up the majority of my work. After all, ancient names are pretty rare, but there are countless commissions for other kinds of items. The most exhausting part of taking commissions isn't the forging work itself. It's trying to decipher some of my clients' confusingly worded requests. I spend so much of my time just helping my clients get their ideas straight so they can tell me what they actually want. And then I can finally pick up my hammer and get to work. When I see my clients having an epiphany where they finally realize what they want, I don't get any joy out of it anymore. In fact, it makes me want to throw up. So much so that it ruins my appetite. When I don't have any commissions, I would usually make some small gadgets. For example, these shoes I'm wearing use the latest flitchist in propulsion systems and many new types of alloys. And these headphones I'm wearing can be connected to a record player. So I can listen to a record while I work at the forge. Oh, it sounds complicated. Well, not really, it's just, easier to put a little extra care into things when you're working on something you like. The main reason I became a name engraver was because both my father and mother, as well as most of my kin, were also name engravers. And when I was little, my parents would always tell me that of all the tribes in Natlan, only ours could shoulder the responsibility of forging ancient names. They hoped that I could also carry on the tradition when I grew older, so... I agreed to take it on. Yeah, that's really all there is to it. However, before I became a name engraver, I put a lot of thought into whether I should really get involved in such troublesome work. After all, there were a lot of easier jobs I could have picked. Even being a regular blacksmith is easier than working as a name engraver, and I could earn more to boot. But in the end, I chose this path. Forging ancient names is an important task that someone must undertake, and given I happen to have the right abilities for the job, it became my duty to inherit the craft. It's, uh, <laughs> just like my father always says, when every person in Natlan takes up the responsibility they can shoulder, Natlan will stand strong forever. And the job is now my duty, and I perform it regardless of my level of personal interest. And on top of that, I was the most skilled among those who studied the craft in the tribe. If I didn't become a name engraver, that would mean someone else would have to take it on in my stead. The other students constantly asked me questions and copied my homework, so had it become their job to forge ancient names, I'm sure they would have constantly come bothering me with questions, so I figured that taking the job myself would be better than dealing with all of that trouble. Yeah, it's just more convenient for everyone, and saves me from having to worry about other people's work all day. Sleeping, spacing out, basking in the sun. Yeah, when I'm not working, even staring at a blank paper seems interesting. When discussing a forging commission with someone, the thing I'm most afraid of hearing is, this request is neither urgent nor important, just get to it whenever you can. <laughs> In my experience, that is basically equivalent to saying, I might come to rush you at any time. Yeah. Oh, yep. It makes my head hurt just thinking about it. <sighs> I think I'm going to go back to sleep. Sugar and chocolate. I work at the forge, and sweets give me the energy I need to swing my hammer. I don't like water without any flavor. Yeah, yeah, I know that drinking pure water is better for you, but I just can't drink that stuff. Can't you at least add a little bit of sugar or, you know, if all else fails, a squeeze of lemon? Mm -mm, mm -hmm. Delicious, is there more? Oh, what? Oh, when did I finish it? Just now. I, uh, I eat pretty fast, you know, and even faster when it's good. Not bad. I'll have to treat you to some of my cooking next time. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I am good for now. I, uh, I get sleepy if I eat too much. Happy birthday! 
Here, this universal multi-tool set is yours to keep. It has a variety of drills and hammers, as well as three hand saws and five special shaped pry bars, which should come in handy for you in the wild. Oh, and there's also a set of ropes made from woven leather and metal wire. They should be strong enough to lift even a fully grown tapetlosaur. Um, do you know how to tie knots? Yeah, if not, I can teach you now. Yeah, here, watch. Uh, first, hold the rope like this, then loop it around. Hmm. Meow. Hmm. Real gold must still be refined by fire. Thank you. It seems my eyes are getting sharper and my arms <laughs> stronger for swinging my hammer. Hold on. Let me uh, try hammering something. Um, you should uh, stand back. You've helped me so much. I, I can't just let you leave empty handed. Here. Take this gem that I engraved my name on. You can use it to find me for help whenever you like. Whether you need me to fire up the forge or accompany you on a dangerous adventure, I'll be ready to help. This promise will stand until both my name and the stone have eroded into nothing.